welcome back to another edition of Bible Live. I'm Dwight Hall, and this is my co-host, Pastor Mark Howard. Good to see you again, Pastor Mark. I'm it's, glad you're here. It's great to be here, Dwight. We have another um, special for you today with our Remnant Rally. You're not going to want to miss it, but we have to take this important break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Today, people are more frightened than ever about what's in store for their futures. As the financial markets have lost trillions of dollars in value and more citizens have lost their homes and jobs, tensions and threats continue to increase among the nations of the world. And as one national leader said, unprecedented natural disasters have brought Americans to the point of fatigue. Millions of confused souls are now learning that their earthly treasures and comforts can't bring them lasting peace. They are watching their castles built on sand being washed away. And now, more than ever, they are looking for something better. They are looking for answers. But who will be there to offer them the one answer they need? Now, Remnant Publications is proud to present a brand new sharing resource that will touch the heart of today's hurting, seeking soul right where they're at. In today's fast-paced culture, the sheer length of the great controversy has often discouraged many souls from plumbing its life-changing truths. Until now, Remnant has taken the greatest faith-building Bible commentary ever written and made it more accessible to today's reader. Beginning with Volume 1, has developed this powerful voice of truth into four shorter, less intimidating volumes with covers that speak to the heart of contemporary truth seekers. Even better, each volume is priced to share on a massive scale, making it easy on your church and personal outreach budget. If you would like to get involved in this urgent effort to share the end time message, you can act now by calling 1-800-423-1319 or by visiting us on the web at www.remnantpublications.com. Welcome back. Today, again, we're going to have a message from the Remnant Rally. And again, these messages make the Bible alive and practical. Pastor... What's the message today? Well, Dwight, today you might know the speaker. His name is Dwight Hall. Actually, um, this is a message Dwight gave at the rally uh, that's entitled Special Forces for a Special People. You know, soldiers go through intense training mm. to be ready for combat. Right. But Christian soldiers also need training. How much more do Christian soldiers need training? That's what Dwight deals with in this message. So let's get right into it. as our theme, and that's my title this morning. Do you know that, that the Lord created each and every one of us to be special? Do you believe that? Do you truly believe that you're special? Have you been so bad in your, in your lifetime that you still do not believe that you're special? I believed that once when I was younger with all the trouble that I got into, but God if we'll just surrender our hearts, God will do a miracle within each one of us. Do you believe that? Yes. You know, um, as I'm speaking, um, this is my text, 1 Peter 2, 9, and it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do you believe that? Amen, I do too. You know, when I was, when I was in grade school, we didn't have a, any kind of a Christian school here then in Coldwater. And so I, I went to public school here, and I was born and raised here in Coldwater. And um, I wanted to be special. You know when you're little kids, um, and I don't know if they still do that now, probably not like they did it when I was young, because you got video and all kinds of video games and different things. But when I was growing up, some of you that are probably close to my age, what were some of the things, men, that, that you talked about that when you was going to grow up, what you were going to be? T huh? Pilot. Yeah, a pilot. Astronaut. See, I wanted to be an astronaut. That's one of the things. In fact, back then when I got, you know, in, in probably fourth and fifth grade, the Gemini 
um, rockets were taken off, and I had every newspaper article. I wanted to go to the moon. I wanted to go out in space. I love looking at the stars. I had, had a little telescope. And so I wanted to be an astronaut. What else? Okay, a fireman. Absolutely. What else? Short stuff. <laughs> there you go. A baseball player, a football player. Um, you know, my dad talked to me when I was younger about being a dentist. Yeah. See, my dad was in construction for years, and so he thought, well, you know, instead of pounding nails all your life, son, maybe, you know, dentists, they probably make pretty good money. And all I could think of is that there's no way, and, if, and I'm sure there could be some dentists here, so I'm not knocking it because we all need our teeth cleaned and, you know, all that other stuff. I hate going to the dentist, by the way, but uh, I thought there's no way that you're going to get me looking into somebody's mouth. And they thought, well, maybe I could be a doctor. My mom was a nurse, and, and, and there, she would come back and give stories about being in the um, operation room and handing, the, you know, when they say, you know, the knife or all that stuff. And I thought, there's no way I want to stand or be a doctor and cut somebody open. Now, we need that, don't we? But that's not the thing as a, as a young person you talked about. You talked about a fireman and an astronaut and a pilot and all these things, a policeman. And um, so when I grew up, I was no different. I wanted to be somebody special, but I had a complex. I had a couple of them. In fact, there was one of them that I was just really skinny when I was, I was skinny and, and I wouldn't even call it lanky. I was just plain skinny. And uh, the girls used to say that, Dwight, you got a cute smile, but when you turn sideways, you disappear. And so in the summertime, I would never wear any shorts. It would probably be July before I, tuck out, I would take off my long underwear because it made my legs look a little bit bigger. I, I just had a complex. I was so skinny. And uh, I didn't like that. The other one was that I, I grew up from about five. I was a, a born um, probably a Baptist. My grandmother was a Baptist. My mother was a Baptist. And um, so I was a Baptist for a few years. Then my mother took uh, Bible studies with my dad, and, and uh, we became Seventh-day Adventists. So in Coldwater, there was only probably one or two, maybe, uh, Seventh-day Adventists. And uh, you were kind of a weird person. Go to church on Saturday, and, of course, Birthday parties were on Saturday, the basketball games were on Saturdays, the football games were on Saturdays, and so I love sports. I was in Little League, and I pitched, and I love football. I wanted to play football so bad, and finally, um, that my high school year, um, I went into church academy, and of course, that took the football part of it out, except in flag football, but I want to, I want to play tackle football, and I, wanted, I, I used to think, hey, you can call me skinny, but I'm going to still tackle you, and uh, so those are the two complexes I had. Because the kids used to say, you know, what do you do, stand in the corner all day long? And, uh, and on Saturday, you know, you just stand in this room, this white room, and you can't do anything. I mean, there was a lot of questions that was asked me back when I was a young person. And I had kind of a complex. So when I got into academy, um, you know, I didn't want to go. But I went to the dorm and got to be friends with a number of people. And I got in trouble. And... Uh, I've shared some of my testimony with you, and that's not what I'm going to share today, but I ended up getting kicked out. In fact, I was in four high schools in, in about one semester, and uh, the, last, the next to last high school I was in, I was up here in Michigan at, at uh, Great Lakes Academy or Cedar Lake back then, and I promised my parents that I would, I would be good this time, <clears throat> and uh, I was for a little while. I, I, I kept my promise for a while, but um, there was still all these rules and all these regulations that we seemed to have all these do's and these don'ts, and, you know, I got in the wrong crowd, and, and um, I got kicked out, and I'll never forget the thing that's always touched my heart is I, I packed my clothes in a suitcase, and I said, I'm going to run away. And the reason was is because I kept thinking in my mind, I'll never be special. 